Hello, hello, how you doing? It's Phil Thatch, and once again, I have decided to go live. This time I had a little bit more pre-planning. I actually got the studio all set up last night, and I moved my video that was going to come out today, Wednesday. I moved it back to Monday. That was the, that was the Animal Kingdom video, and so uh, anyway, hello. Thanks for joining me. I think while I'm kind of waiting for some people to show up in the chat, so I'll have somebody to talk to, I'm going to kind of explain the name of the live stream. Uh, I'm trying to come up with interesting names for the live stream instead of just saying Phil Live. And, um, you know, one of my favorite bands is Van Halen, so I got my Van Halen t-shirt on today. And when they, they had their first singer and did about six albums, and then they got a second singer, and they released an album called 5150, and then they went on a tour, and... They released a live uh, VHS of that tour, and it was called Live Without a Net. So that's where, that is where the name of, uh, of this week's live stream comes from, Live Without a Net. There's, there is Ed Smiley. Hello, Ed. What is up? Thanks for joining me. Uh, looks like it's just me and you. Let's, let's chat. Um, I've got a few things specifically to talk about this week. But not a whole lot, so hopefully there's Miguel. Hello, Miguel. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I am so far. I am indeed so far. But uh, hopefully it's going to get even better now that I'm home from work and doing a live stream. Let's see. I'm going to switch over to my main, my main camera. So I've got my two cameras set up again. I've got my Z6 straight in front of me. And this week up on the right, uh, up there... I have the Z50 uh, kind of pointing down at my table. I think I just bumped my microphone. Hopefully that wasn't excessively noisy. So that's a pretty cool setup. I, I took a few minutes and set this up last night. Ah. Good afternoon, Mike. Thanks for joining the live stream. Hope you're doing well. Well, um, I've been doing a lot of photography. Uh, Heather and I have, you know, we built that little blind or hide or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think different parts of the world call it different things. Here in America, most people call it a blind. And I think overseas they're called a hide. And, you know, I've had a hide or a blind on the back porch uh, several times over the years, but it's always kind of fallen apart. This one should last a little longer. I'm sure it will eventually fall apart, but we finally made a couple of videos from that, uh, from that blind, let me see if I can get an idea of when those will come out. Because the making, uh, appreciate the Disney videos. Thank you, and I really appreciate that. They don't do very well uh, in terms of views, but I'm glad you liked them. And, uh, you know, we won't be back at Disney World until... January of 24. I already have reservations in January of 24. So probably in February of 24, just like in February of 23, there will be some Disney videos. There's Ray. I thought, Ray, I thought you were supposed to be uh, doing UTC sports photography today. It's good to see you. Are you getting ready for a, a basketball game to start? Uh, let's see. When do those videos from the blind? We've got two. And the first one from the blind comes out March the 4th. Although if that's a Wednesday, it might be moved. So somewhere around close to March the 4th. And the second one from the blind comes out somewhere around March the 22nd. I missed softball because of work headed to basketball. All right. Well, uh, so that's, I think Ray is going to go shoot the last UTC men's home game. I believe is what Ray's going to go shoot. Let's see if I can find that. Let's see who they're playing. Let's see who Ray's going to shoot. Let's see. Today is the 22nd of February. He is going to go shoot the Sanford game. Comes on tonight at 7 o'clock. And uh, it'll be on ESPN Plus. So if, if, you are, if you watch the UTC game on ESPN Plus tonight, look for Ray sitting crisscross applesauce uh, and taking photographs of the game with his Z9. That ought to be pretty cool. Go Mox. I hope they win. Are, are they, Ray, are they in first place? 
Hello, Bill. Thanks for joining the live league leaders. So they are in first place. Thanks for joining the live stream, Bill. So there's what Ray's doing tonight, but that was cool of him to stop in for a minute. Hey, look at, see that picture of Ray right there? His, uh, by his chat, I made that. Th those were some of the first pictures I ever made using my, uh, using my R6 and the 50 millimeter uh, 1.8. Gray says, no, oh, opponent is playing against the league leader. So Samford is the league leader. So we definitely need to win this ball game. I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. Greetings, Bill. We got two Bills. Hello, Bill S. and Bill Martin. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Um, so that's what I've been doing uh, is photography from our homemade blind. Um, the first one, Heather and I both used the uh, the R7 and the 100 to 500. And the second one, because I didn't use all of the 100 to 500 uh, during a lot of that. <laughs> Ray says, all my profile photos are Phil Thatch originals. That's, that's probably, a lot of that is probably true. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's made a, a Ray profile picture, but a lot of them. Uh, but anyway, on the, in the second time we were in the blind, I used Howdy Terry. Thanks for joining the stream. Hope you're doing well. Um, the second time we were in the blind, I used the R6 Mark II. And for whatever reason, I think the, a lot of the birds we were making photographs of the second time were smaller. There were a lot of chipping sparrows, which are just tiny. Uh, I kind of wish I had been using the R7 to have a little extra reach. All right, time for basketball. Good luck, Ray. All right, here's a question from Mike. He says, I have the R7 with the EF 100 to 400 Mark II, also the EF 1.4 Mark III extender. How does this combo compare with the RF 100 to 500? I would say pretty similarly. Uh, let's see, you would have 700 millimeters. Um, I think the 100 to 400 is 5.6 on the long end, so it'd be a 700 millimeter F8 versus a 500 millimeter 7.1. So that'd be pretty close, I would say. I think teleconverters, 1.4s, will degrade um, the quality of the image just a tiny little bit. The the two, the 2.0 teleconverter degrades the quality of the image a little bit more, I think. Um, so I would say at 500 millimeters, you're going to be better with the 100 to 500, but you can't go any further than 500 with it. So it's kind of like this. Now, when I use my 100 to 500 um, on my R7, I, I have the RF uh, 1.4 teleconverter. And I just, I, I have used it on here, but I don't really like it that much. Uh, I reserve the right to go out and shoot with it three weeks from now and change my mind. But as of right now, I don't really like it that much. Uh, I have an audio question for you guys. I've moved my microphone a little bit closer this week. You can actually see it in the shot uh, than I had it last week. And I'm seeing my uh, meter go almost to the red. So if there's any, if the audio sounds bad, if it sounds over uh, like it's clipping or buzzing, let me know and I'll move this microphone back some. But if it sounds okay, let me know that too. Uh, let's see. I didn't see this chat from Gerald Ferry. Thanks for joining us, Gerald. Why no Annette? What? Why no Annette? What did she do? I don't. I don't know what that means. Uh, maybe. She, maybe he means why no Heather. Uh, if you're talking about Heather, she is in class right now. She's. She's uh, working on her PhD and she has a class right now. And normally I'd be hanging out with her right now, uh, but because she's in class. I've decided um, these last few weeks to to um, to go live, and I'm sure she will be joining me for some live streams in the future, but probably not the ones over the next two or three weeks. And I think I'm not sure exactly when her class ends, but it's I think I have at least two more weeks that I'm probably going to do a live stream, and maybe it's three. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, if you're talking about where is Heather, she's in class, but she's definitely still with me, and she's. Uh, She's been working a lot, so a lot of my videos, once we've gotten back from, from um, Disney World, she's not in them because she's been, I've been going out doing photography and she has been working on schoolwork, but both of the videos in the blind, she's with me, so she's not going anywhere. 
All right, let's see. Uh, Bill says, sounds good. No overmodulation. Fantastic. Mike says, sound fine. Thank you. Ed sounds, says, sound fine. Thank you. Terry, audio sounds good. No clipping. Fantastic. Maybe I should put a distortion pedal uh, like on a guitar in this thing. Uh, Bill says, sounds fine. Uh, a net. I don't know what that means. A net in terms of what? In terms of... I don't know what, uh, sorry, Gerald, I, I don't understand what you're talking about. Type something real long and detailed so my dumb butt can figure out what in the world you mean. Okay, Ed says, saw you use the 70 to 200 2.8 at Animal Kingdom. I picked up an F4 a while back and thinking I may have made a mistake. Thoughts? Well, uh, it depends. If, if what you want is that focal length, um, super high quality, and as light as possible, then you made the best choice. Um, but for me, the, the 7200 2.8 is the way to go for me um, because I like the low light uh, of the 2.8 and I like the bokeh of the 2.8. Uh, but, you know, if you took an R7 and the 7200 F4 to Animal Kingdom, you'd have a great day because that lens is light and, you know, Heather shot with the 100 to 500. And at the fastest, it's 4.5. So, um, Annette, Annette, I still don't know what you mean, Gerald. I'm really sorry. I apologize. I, I feel so dumb because I can't figure out what you're talking about. Um, but, you know, like Thomas Heaton, for example, as a landscape photography lens, Thomas Heaton, back when he shot Canon um, E mount, he used the 70 to 200 F4 E mount lens all the time. That was that was his long lens. So nothing wrong with that lens. I, I prefer the 2.8 because I do uh, I use it for concert photography. I use it for sports photography where you need that 2.8 to get your shutter speed way up. And it did help at Animal Kingdom because the bird aviary, uh, both of them, even the one that was open and you saw in that video and the one on the Maharaja Jungle Trek that was closed, both of them are very, very dark. And I think that's to kind of keep the birds comfortable. But uh, it really, I mean, sometimes even with the, even at 2.8, I was shooting at 1 60th of a second uh, on a couple of those shots because it was just so dark in there. Um, so, you know, I, Again, I don't think you made a mistake. Just for me, I'd rather have the 2.8. Uh, let's see. Hello, Phil from Maryland. Oh, J-Rod Art. I remember you from last week's stream. Hello. Nice to see you. Angelo Garcia Jr. Mine is always 7.1, usually always zoomed in on the 100 to 500. Yeah, that's uh, same here. Even on, the, uh, even on the R7, Heather and I are usually always at 500, but in the blind on the back porch... Uh, we found that we were at about, instead of being all the way out here at 500, a lot of times we were around 300. And so that's why I thought, you know what, I can, I'll, I'll, I normally don't like to use this lens on the, uh, on a full frame camera because I like to have more than 500 millimeters full frame equivalent, but 300, which is where we were at a lot the first time we were in the blind times 1.6 is 480. So that's why I, I shot the second time with the uh, with the R6 Mark II. But again, the second time, a lot of the birds we were shooting were smaller, and I, I was kind of wishing for a little bit more focal length. Not much. I mean, if I had a if I had a 600 millimeter lens, I probably would have been fine. And really, I did fine. I, I got I think I ended up with somewhere between 17 and 20 keepers. Uh, so I was happy. Uh, let's see in your pro let me make sure I hadn't missed anything. I, I got Angelo. Terry says in your processing R7, do you find that you need to use a lot of denoise? Well, Terry, um, uh, yes, is the short answer, but I run every single picture I share through Topaz denoise. If I take a landscape photography photo at 100 ISO, I still run it through Topaz denoise. I just like Two things, I like the way it cleans uh, images up and I love the way it sharpens. Like I'll, the sharpening slider in Lightroom, I, I leave it on zero. I don't sharpen my pictures at all in Lightroom. I just run them through Topaz and let it sharpen 
and I really like the way it sharpens a lot better. So I always use Topaz Denoise regardless of, of whether or not the picture is noisy. I guess I could use their Sharpen AI, but Denoise works just fine for it, so I never did invest in Sharpen AI. But yes, um, and you know, even the R6 Mark II and the R6 and the and the Nikon Z6, which those three cameras don't have a lot of noise compared to the R7 and compared to the D500, um, I still use Topaz every time. Uh, da, 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 Ed Smiley, thanks. I wish you could use the RF teleconverters on the 7200. Yeah, that is, you know, um, there, it's kind of a double-edged sword, I, and I mentioned this in my in my long-term review of the 100 to 500. You know, you can put the teleconverter on there, but you can't zoom it back any further than 300 millimeters. You can't go like this with it. Uh, and the reason for that, I think, is because they were trying to make the lens as small and compact as possible, which I, I love that feature, especially after uh, spending several years carrying a, a Nikon 500 f4, which was just huge and heavy. I just love the uh, uh, small lenses that get the job done. And so because of that, uh, like I would probably not put a teleconverter on, on my 70 to 200 just because I have the 100 to 500. But um, one of the thing, you know, it, it is, uh, I should get the, the lens out of the cabinet. Okay, so I'm getting I'm getting two I'm getting two 70 to 200 lenses out of the cabinet. This is the first 70 to 200 2.8 I ever bought, and I'm going to take the the lens hood off so we're comparing apples to apples. This is the uh, I wonder if I can make it get in focus. This is the Nikon 70 to 200 f 2.8 G VR2, which uh, at the time I bought it was the most expensive lens I'd ever owned. I've had this thing for the better part of a decade. It may even be a decade by now. Uh, but love this lens. It's dynamite. And here's the RF. Here's the RF 70 to 200 2.8. Look at the size difference. Um, now this lens will take a teleconverter and the way you can tell is the the back element is is way up in there. Uh, this lens, the Canon one, will not take a teleconverter. And look, its back element is right there. So that's why it won't take a teleconverter, because the teleconverter sticks into the lens a little bit. Um, now, so you sacrifice being able to use a teleconverter or an extender, as Canon calls them, to get this tiny size, uh, which I think is fantastic. Now, here's something else that I really like about a back element that's really close. It's easy to clean. Uh, lenses that will accept a teleconverter and have their their rearmost element way up in there, it's hard to clean that element. Um, so that's another thing that that I like about this lens. But I, you know, I guess I wish it would take a teleconverter without sacrificing the rear element being close and easy to clean, and without sacrificing the small size. But that's not very realistic. So there's my there's my 70 to 200 rant. Not really, really a rant. I've got a lot of lenses piled up here on the table. Okay, uh, I have, I'm sure I've gotten way behind. Mike Mitchum says, hey Phil, hello Mike. Thanks for joining the stream. I hope you are feeling well. Uh, J-Rod Art says, question, what software are you using for the live stream? This is um, OBS, uh, which I don't even know what OBS stands for, but it works well. It works well for my purposes. So that is what I'm using. You can, uh, you, it, it, it's easy to transition back and forth between cameras. And I've got, of course, I've got the, uh, the picture in picture set up where, um, where both cameras are going, or I can easily click something and have just one camera, click something else and have just the other camera, click something else and have both. It's really cool, uh, and I'm running it on a on a Mac Mini with an M1 processor, um, 16 gigs of RAM, and it it 
it, it seems to handle it just fine, no problems. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm trying out OBS software, pretty good so far. Yeah, that's what I've always used is OBS. Oh, I'm getting way behind. Uh, Angelo Garcia Jr. says, you probably won't remember, but I battled my R7 with 100, 400 gig. Yes, I do remember, Angelo. As a matter of fact, I mentioned, I didn't mention you by name, but I mentioned that I had a viewer who really, really struggled getting his R7 to work in last week's stream. And I mentioned that, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you did is reset the camera and suddenly everything was fine. So I'm so glad that you, that you got yours working because I, I tried to help you on a number of occasions and everything that I offered as a suggestion, you would, you would thought of way before I offered it as a suggestion. So I'm glad you got it working. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not a fan of Lightroom Sharp. Or oh yeah, yeah, me either. So uh, I mean, it it does okay, especially if you if you slide the. Uh, I can't even. It's been so long since I've used it. I can't remember where you hold down a button and, and slide the slider, and it, sh it it everything black is not being sharpened and everything white is being sharpened. When you do that, it works pretty good. But it, it's just the sharpening in Topaz Denoise, which is so stupid sounding. I just love the sharpening on my Denoise program. Because, you know, denoise usually takes sharpening away. But I just love the way Topaz Denoise AI sharpens a picture. Angelo, I meant 100 to 500. I defaulted to factory, started over, and now get sharp images, but with blurry patches. Yeah, I, that's, that's pretty common, uh, the blurry patches. Like, if you get a bird in focus, and you're pressing the autofocus button, you know, and you're pressing the autofocus, you, you don't want to just get it in focus and, and let go because the bird's going to move, especially a small bird. So you're probably moving a little bit and the bird's probably moving a little bit. And while the focus point might stay right on that bird's eye as it moves around and you're firing off 10 or 12 or 15 or 30 or 40 frames per second, depending on how you have your camera set up, not every one of them is going to be sharp. Uh, and I think it's, um, I think it's an unrealistic expectation to think they're all going to be sharp. Um, you know, now if a bird's slowly flying across and your focus point stays on the bird the whole time and the bird's 50 yards away or 30 yards away, you might get every one of them sharp. And I, I've, I've experienced that and I've shared uh, that in videos where, you know, look, there's 141 pictures and every one of them sharp. But if it's a bouncing around tiny bird that's 15 feet away from you, and you're moving a little bit and the bird's moving a little bit, not every picture is going to be sharp. So um, you get sharp images, but with blurry patches, that's completely normal and to be expected. Don't let that get you down, Angelo. All right, Ed Smiley, I have had nice success with DxO Photo Lab for sharpening. Picked it up on sale during Black Friday. You know, I've never tried that. And it uh, seems like there's some other uh, DxO program called Pure Raw that's supposed to be really good for noise reduction. And I'm having, so, I, I mean, I guess I should try it sometime, but I'm so happy with with my workflow with, with Topaz Denoise AI that I just haven't tried it yet. Maybe I will one day. Uh, J Rod Art, I bought the Topaz software, but have yet to see any improvement. That's interesting. Um, that's really interesting. I can't imagine, I can't imagine not seeing any improvement with it, but, um, I don't know, maybe maybe it's not saving the file right or something. I, I don't know. I can't imagine that. Uh, Angelo Garcia Jr., I am going to experiment and try to pair my R7 with the EF300 2.8 with an adapter. I would love to. You know, a friend of mine, Forrest, uh, feels, I'm embarrassed. I can't remember his last name right now. But anyway, there's a guy named Forrest. He's really active in one of the... Um, in one of the R7 forums on Facebook, and he bought a, a used, I think he bought the first version that doesn't even have stabilization, 302.8, and he's been making some beautiful images with an adapted, really old 302.8. Uh, it says, Angelo, I use the RF adapter with my Sigma 302.8, works well. Yeah, uh, we, we uh, Ed got a really great deal on that, if I remember from last week. Sounds good, Ed. Hey, there's Ron Durant. Uh, I see there, Ron Durant. I almost said Ron Durant. Ron's name is Ron Durant. He has a YouTube channel. You should check it out. As a matter of fact, segue, um, speaking of working from a blind, let me 
get my ducks in a row over here. Uh, let me show you Ron's channel. If you look at my channel and you go down to the bottom and you see featured channels right here is Ron's channel. And Ron did a video right here. Don't watch it right now because you're watching a live stream and you're also taking a moment and hitting thumbs up. But later on, uh, check out this video that Ron made. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of a long one, but you guys are patient, obviously, because you're in a live stream and live streams are long. But uh, Ron kind of shows his his backyard bird studio, and he and it, he shows while he's while, uh, he's working on some birds from his blind. He has a small blind; it's a chair blind. It, it's it just is a chair with just enough uh, fabric to go around him in the blind. And his cat is is bothering him the whole time he's trying to work on these pictures. It's a really cool video. Uh, Heather and I watched it one night in the in the living room, and we really enjoyed it. So, check out that video of Ron's sometime after you hit thumbs up and finish this video. Okay, let's see, where am I at? Uh, Ernie, hello Ernie. I think I don't think I've said hello to you yet. Hello Ernie, hi Phil, what are you shooting with now? Uh, you mean like on the, on the live stream? For the live stream, camera one is a Nikon Z6 one. It's not even the second version of it. Uh, with an FTZ adapter and the 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens, camera two, camera two up there, I can't quite point at it right. Camera two is a Nikon Z50 with the 16 to 50 kit lens. So that's what we're working with right now. Uh, if you mean what am I shooting with um, for most photography, you're listing R6 Mark II and R7, and that is what I do use. If so, how's the, resolu how's the resolution on the R6? Well, the resolution on the R6 non-Mark II was a little bit weak for cropping. Uh, and, and, you know, if you're doing bird photography, you do a lot of cropping. And so it was kind of a struggle. Uh, but the, you know, you got four more megapixels with the R6 Mark II and it's still a little bit weak for bird photography, but for everything else, uh, sports photography, portraits, landscape, I'm perfectly fine with the resolution. The only thing, only, or only area where it's weak, in my opinion, is bird photography and that's bird photography that you have to crop a lot. Let's see. My comments are scrolling off the screen. Uh, how's the resolution? I returned the R3 and bought the Sony A7R5, but still have my R7. Well, the, you know, the R3, if I remember correctly, is a 24 megapixel sensor. It's exactly the same as the R6 Mark II. So if you didn't like the resolution of the R3, then you, then you won't like the R6 Mark II. Um, but the R7, you know, it, it has the effective megapixels. If, if you, if you were to take the pixel density of the R7 at 32 and a half megapixels and expand that out to full frame, one moment. What is 32.5 times 1.6 squared? It'd be the same as an 83.2 megapixel. I don't know if it's focusing on that or not. Anyway, 83.2 megapixels. It's, it's the same pixel density as 83.2 megapixels. So uh, it's good for cropping. Matter of fact, it's already cropped to 1.6, you know what I mean? That 83.2 megapixel full frame sensor is already cropped to 32 and a half to 1.6 times. And then you can crop it some more because it's, it's, you know, it's, it's just a fantastic bird camera. Uh, try to keep your ISO low. Uh, Ed, hi Ed. I have used even a 2X teleconverter to get 605.6 and it works good enough. Yeah. Um, Good enough. That's the key. You know, it's not going that whatever lens you had that. Uh, oh, you're talking about the 302.8. It's not going to be as sharp as it is without the teleconverter. Uh, and I'm sure Ed would admit this, but it's good enough. So that's awesome. Uh, let's see, Angelo. I would love to find an EF 400 in decent shape. Yeah, me too. A 2.8. I've actually shopped and I mentioned this last week on the stream and my leg is itching. So let me just do weird stuff and scratch my leg. Uh, last week on the stream, I've actually shopped around for EF 400 2.8s, EF 300 2.8s, and the EF 600 F4s. 
uh, and gosh, I came pretty close to pulling the trigger two or three times. And then, uh, I went to the hospital and had to spend a bunch of money to pay for those bills. So thoughts of those lenses are kind of by the wayside right now. Plus I got engaged and I've got a wedding to uh, pay for. So, and my daughter got engaged. So anyway, probably won't be getting one of those for quite some time, but I would love to have one. And that'd be really cool if you got one. Steven Dudley. Hello, Steven. Uh, Nice to see you. What autofocus point do you recommend for shooting large deer and elk? Well, I would set the camera up just like I set it up for birds. I use, um, if you're talking about a Canon camera, I use full sensor animal eye detect autofocus on the main back button autofocus, button one. And then now sometimes that deer or that elk or that bird or that whatever it is might be in a thicket and the camera might not be able to pick out that that animal eye from all that mess. And so my second button, which is the star button, I program that to be single point autofocus, which single point is what I use, you know, on cameras that don't have animal and bird eye detect autofocus, I use single point. And then I put that single point on the animal's eye. I might move that single point around to change composition. But usually with these Canon cameras, if you get the single point on the animal's eye and then get that animal's eye in focus, then you can switch back to, to your main full sensor autofocus. And now that it has that animal's eye in focus, you can use the full sensor and it'll, and it'll stay on that animal's eye. And then you can move your camera around and recompose without having to move any focus points because the camera should do it for you in that situation. Okay, where are we? Uh, Photo Lab has Pure Raw in it. They also have 30-day fully functional trials. That would be cool. See, there's another program that I should try, but I'm so doggone happy with just using Topaz Denoise and nothing else that I just haven't done it. Uh, I'm afraid I would like it, and then I'll have to change my workflow. How strange is that? J-Rod Art, I have tried with several bird slash eagle shots, and when I bring them up, they just don't look any better. I will continue to play with it. Okay, I got you. Uh, J-Rod says, smash that like button. Yes, please do. Please, that helps so much. Uh, Ron says, oh no. I guess he was saying oh no because I started talking about um, that video he made that I was so fond of. Actually, Ron's got a lot of videos that I'm fond of. He's got some, some, uh, some how to operate a bulldozer videos, which really aren't my thing. But he also has some wonderful um, waterfall videos and some, and that, I really, really like that bird photography from his Valine video. It was just cool. Uh, J. Rod Art, let me know if you have a YouTube channel and I will go out and subscribe. Uh, yeah, you can, matter of fact, you can click on, on um, if you're talking about Ron, you can click on, on his name and there it is because that's his YouTube channel right there. Let's see. Let me know if you have uh, J. Rod Art stinks that the Z50 does not have an AC power option. Yeah, and you know what? Neither does the R. Neither does the Z61. Ron has a Z62. As a matter of fact, he has two of them, and you can just plug in power on those. But uh, that is not the case. Am I out of focus? Hmm. I was looking at. Uh, I was looking at a different window and it looked like I was out of focus. That must just be the resolution of that window. I think I'm in focus. Let's see. Angelo, since you and Heather built your blind, my idea was to just wear a camo poncho on my back porch chair, but spooks them every time when I move the camera. Yeah, and see, um, that's, that's a tricky thing. We have that net, we got a camo netting um, that you can see through and just the tip of our lens po pointing out, but we still need to, if, a, if we're focusing on one perch and the bird's on a different perch, we kind of need to move slow. We don't need to just slam over there because we'll still spook them. And even in the blind, some birds are just smart and know not to come up there, but um, most of them will come up and land on the on the on I mean we're on the porch with them let's see 
Ron is asking J-Rod what camera he uses. J-Rod mainly uses a Z9. I hear those are nice. That's what Ray always tells me. There's Jeff and Leslie Wildlife Photography. Uh, can't stick around long. Stopping by to say hi. Hello, Jeff and Leslie. This is Phil. And there's Heather in the other room. And J-Rod Art, good to see you here too. Uh, Ed Smiley says, if anyone wants to buy an R6 with care pack, let me know. Just coming back from cleaning maintenance from Canon. Oh, cool. Uh... Ron says, nice, in my dreams, I have a Z62. Actually, Ron has two Z62s. J-Rod says, hi to Jeff and Leslie. J-Rod, subscribed to Ron's channel. That's awesome. Uh, J-Rod also has a Z6 and a Z50. And Ron says he's going to hit you back. Man, this is, this is a love fest we got going on in here. I love it. Uh... And Ed subscribed to Ron, too. That's fantastic. Jeff and Leslie says, J-Rod Art Jim, it's just Jeff tonight. Leslie worked today, and his reading, her way of saying she's going to bed early. I got gotcha. you. Thank you, Ed. Sounds good, Jeff. You can use... Uh, J-Rod, are you saying the Z6 will... will uh, power while it's while it's active if so i may plug a uh i may plug my z6 up uh ed smiley i bought a pop-up hunting blind from amazon and used that see that's what i used uh in the backyard or actually i used i used it on the back porch but i'm so lazy i would just put the thing out there and leave it and after about a year of been beat up by the weather it would just fall apart um I just didn't want to have to take it down and put it back up every time I went out on the back porch. So that's why finally Heather and I built that one that we built. I want one of those blinds could help a lot. They really do. They really do. Some of my best photos I've ever made of, of small birds have been right there on the back porch in the blind. It's amazing how much sharper you can get a bird when you can fill the frame with it instead of having it small in the frame and then having to crop. It's just, it's a lot. Ron says, the Z62 will charge while using if you have a power delivery. I have a 61 Amazon that works well. Uh, Angelo, see-through netting is a must. Absolutely. J-Rod, yes, Nikon has a battery AC adapter setup that you can use. Are you saying uh, like, a, like something that plugs, that has a wire coming out of a fake battery that you plug in? You know, I had one of those that I was borrowing from Ray, and he needed it, and I gave it back to him because it was his. Z6 will do it through the USB-C. Okay, I'm caught up on comments. That means I can move on to my next thing. Here's another YouTube channel I want to, to show you guys that, uh, that I like. And you guys may have seen this one before. This is Wild Alaska. He's a he's a, a photographer in Alaska. I think his name's Scott. And I first found his channel because he got a an, an R7 right when they first came out, kind of like I did. He he might have even gotten his before I got mine, uh, which is kind of crazy because I got mine immediately. And he's he's got a lot of videos. Uh, some of them are kind of long-winded, which I'm not thrilled with that, but man, he's just recently, he started doing actual photography videos. Uh, and like this one right here, is my pointer on that? This one right here where he shot a uh, Red Fox on a Z9. By the way, he's bought a Z9 and he's bought he's got an adapter and he uses his Canon EF500 F4 on it. Uh, that video is really, really good. This, uh, this Otters video, which he used um, the Z9 and the 200 to 500, like this one right here. Uh, and another one that I just watched, he used the, uh, the 500 F4 on this Swan video that was really, really cool. So there is another channel that I like. And I wanted to show you guys. Let's see.
Just make sure and get the Nikon version, not the eBay knockoff. That makes sense. Yes, the eBay knockoff won't work. I tried it. Oh, wow. Okay. I like Wild Alaska. Yeah, me too, Angelo. Ed Smiley. Yes, Wild Alaska is a good channel. Cool. Casey00. Hello, Casey. Nice to see you. That dude's put the R7 through the ringer. I wish he would show off more of his photography instead of just talking about stuff. Yeah, me too. And that's, that's why I wanted to point out those videos that I did because... Uh, in those he's, he's going out and shooting and sharing his day and the shots he gets. And that's, that's the kind of, that's the kind of video I like to make. And that's the kind of video I like to watch. Um, so anyway, cool. Uh, Bill, I don't know if I've said hello to Casey yet. Hello, Casey. Maybe I just did two seconds ago and forgot. I got a lot going on here. <laughs> uh, Bill Martin, my R7 arrives tomorrow. Hopefully it's an emergency backup due to my Main camera going down. Your R7 experience to help sell me on it. Well, I, I hope you like yours. If you like yours half as much as I like mine, you're going to love it. Uh, J Rod Photo Art just hit the sub on Wild Alaska. Nice channel. Yeah, I think I think you'll really like it. Tell them Phil sent you. Uh, Angelo Garcia Jr. Lane in the snow for swans is dedicated. Yeah, and he has one of those. Somebody I can't remember who was. It might have been Hassan. Last week was asking me if I use a ground pod. And he used one in that video, so I thought that was, I thought that was cool. Do you think Canon will ever approve third-party lenses? I sure hope so. Um, you know, Nikon is actually selling Tamron lenses with Nikon written on them. Uh, the, they've got a 28 to 75 2.8 that's made by by uh, Tamron. And, and sold by Nikon with Nikon written on it. My buddy Ray has one, and it's it works really well. He's really happy with it. Um, I, maybe, but you know what? You guys are going to be mad at me for saying this. I don't care. I like the doggone RF lenses, and I'm willing to pay for them. So, um, you know, it, it's not a big loss for me if, if they don't. Um, I can understand wanting... Uh, um, a less expensive version that does real good, but I'd rather have an expensive version that does the best. So, um, you know, I say that now while I can afford to buy a lens every once in a while, but in a few years when I retire, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be, I'll maybe singing a different tune. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I think Canon will J rod art says, I, I hope so. Uh, you know, just, just, and I'll tell you what, there's a lens that Tamron makes, and I may have mentioned this last week because I really love the idea of this lens, and it's a 35 to 150 uh, zoom lens, and it's a variable aperture. At 35, you're at f2 at wide open, and at 150, you're at 2.8. And, man, that would be a fantastic basketball photography lens on full frame. That would be just absolutely dynamite. And I, I think if they made a, a Canon... Uh, RF version of that, I, I think I'd probably, I think I'd probably buy it. Really cool. Okay. Uh, Ed Smiley, I have been getting some Air 70 on the R7 when shooting continuous. Had the same problem on my R5 and needed the main board replaced. Uh, I've gotten an Air 70 or two from time to time. It's, it's not very common, but usually I just flip the camera off and flip it back on and, and off I go. And, and, you know, and I've had errors of, of, a uh, similar variety with my Nikon cameras. Um, you know, they are computers. Every once in a while, you got to reboot them. I hope uh, that that's not a, a system board replacement sort of a thing. But for me, uh, you know, usually you can clean the contacts on your memory card, clean the contacts on your lens, clean the contacts inside the camera body that connect to the lens, put everything back together, and, and you're usually good to go for a while. J. Rod Art says, third-party lenses make everything better for all cameras. So many options. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Angelo says, once we buy enough RF lenses and Canon sales slow down, maybe. Uh, Bill Martin, ditto on RF lenses. They are amazing. Yes. Ron says, when committed to Nikon mirrorless, I went all in with Z lenses. Yeah, Ron had a, uh, if I remember correctly, and he can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, if I remember correctly, Ron had a Tamron 70-200 2.8. And he struggled with it on his Z6 II. And now he has a, a genuine Nikon Z 70-200 2.8. And he absolutely loves that thing. Um, I, think, I think I'm quoting him correctly. 
All right, here comes Miguel, and he says, such a wonderful video and photos in Animal Kingdom. Thank you. Today, I was trying to take photos of blackbirds, Carolina wren, and song sparrow, stone sparrow with a breath at golden. Oh, oh yeah, I, I see what you're saying. You're trying to, to get uh, their breath in the air. Man, today in, in, in my area, I wore shorts to work today. Um, and earlier this week, I wore um, a long sleeve shirt, a, a vest, and a jacket on top of that. So the weather has changed. You know, and tomorrow I'm going to um, tomorrow I'm going to hike to a waterfall. I'm going to Greeter Falls. If anybody's bored, go to Greeter Falls early tomorrow morning, and you may see me. Um, and I'm, I think I'm going to wear shorts when I go there. So definitely can't get any bird's breath around here right now. Let's see what Jeff and Leslie say here. Uh, J-Rod Art, I mentioned on Chuck's channel this morning, and I'm getting more interested in video, and D500 is pitiful video camera. It's not pitiful as, as long as you don't need to adjust the focus. Uh, also, to quote Chuck, I just want something new, and I wonder who Chuck is, so y'all have to help me out with who Chuck is. I hear you, Jeff. Gear acquisition syndrome is good and bad. Yeah, I, I, I like gas. I don't mind it, but right now I don't really have gas that much. Uh, I would like to have that new Canon 135 1.8, but I don't think I'd use it that much. I'd love to have that 28 to 72.8, but I don't think I'd use it that much. Um, I'd like to have the 50 1.2, the 85 1.2, but I don't think I'd use it that much. Not enough to justify the big price on those lenses. Uh, you know this. This uh, this 14 to 35 was kind of the the last missing piece of my kit, and uh, I bought a used one from MPB. Oh, that's something I wanted to show y'all during this stream. Let me get this box over here. Hello, second camera. I'm gonna reach right in front of you for a second. I wanted to show y'all this box from MPB. This is, they, they didn't have the original box, which I was sad about, but when you open this up, it says warning. It says change gear, and it says warning. This box contains a marvel of engineering and design, a tool for harnessing light and the means to produce unforgettable images. Approach with endless excitement and maximum creativity. Isn't that cool? Uh, and now at the bottom of the box, this is your turn. Send us the kit you're not using, and we'll send you some cash. Get an instant quote at mpb.com slash sale. Well, I did do that, but I got a better quote from Robert's camera. So the, the lens I replaced, I, bought, I sent someplace else. But anyway, I just thought, I thought that little quote in the MPB box was cool. Okay. Let's see. Where are we? Uh, Mike says, what memory cards do you use in your R7? And who do you buy them from? Um, I use, let's see if I can get this to go in focus. I'll have to cover my face. That's the card I use, the 128. Uh, it is a SanDisk Extreme Pro 300 megabytes a second. And as you can see, it's got, it's the, what do you call that? UHS-2 or something, the one that has two rows of electrodes uh, and is faster. I use the 128 in my R7 and I use a 64 in the R6 Mark II because I typically, uh, you know, the files are smaller and I typically take less photos with the, with the R6 Mark II. Um, sometimes if I'm just carrying one of those cameras, I'll, I'll take the 128 out and put it in here. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, that's what I use. Let's see. Big Bird Fishing. Hello, Big Bird Fishing. Thanks for joining the stream. I think this is the, your first chat of the stream, so thank you. Uh, what would cause autofocus issues if I'm low on the beach shooting shorebirds, even in the morning or evening, on small warblers in the trees, the Sony a7 IV, and 200-600G nails it most of the time? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I know that the Canon autofocus system struggles. Like if you've got a white piece of paper with a black line across it, 
off, the Canon autofocus system will miss it every time. If you take that same piece of paper and turn it like this to where that, to where that line is vertical, the Canon will nail it. Uh, and that is why I'm excited about the next thing I want in a camera from Canon is two things. I'd like for them to, to start producing stacked sensors in their cheaper cameras, not having to go all the way to an R3 or an R1 to get a stacked sensor. And the other thing is instead of dual pixel autofocus, I'm excited for them to come out with quad pixel autofocus. And I bet you when the R1 comes out, it'll have quad pixel autofocus. But with quad pixel autofocus, it would not miss that horizontal line. Um, you'll probably have to talk to Tony Northrup to get more scientific about it than that. But anyway, I think that may be some of it. But I don't think I don't think Sony has quad pixel autofocus, so I, I can't explain why their camera is able to hit that shot more often in your experience. Okay, I am getting behind, way behind. I'm talking too much on each chat answer, I think, is why I'm getting so far behind. Oh, and I think I've missed some. Gosh, if I miss your, your chat, I apologize. I'm doing the best I can. Normally I have Heather helping me, but during this uh, series of, of live streams when I'm by myself, I'm just going to have to do the best I can. Uh, such a wonderful video, uh, Animal Kingdom. I definitely responded to that. Almost uh, This one I think I missed. Jeff and Leslie said, I almost pulled the trigger on an R7 yesterday. Still debating between waiting on Nikon to do something look at Sony or pull the trigger on the R7. Um, gosh, that's, you know, I'm going to say get the R7, but uh, you got to decide what you're going to do. I, I've heard that, that Nikon's about to announce some cameras. Probably the R8 would be my guess. I mean, the, the Z8 would be my guess. Um, gosh, man, I, I think you'll really like the, the R7. Okay, so I missed that comment, but I think I saw this one. I think the fact they're coming out with cheaper... RFS that it will be a while for third party. Okay, I, maybe I didn't miss that. Uh, Ron says, got rid of most F mounts that I had. Well, except for the 500 PF, I'll always keep that. Yeah, I don't blame it. Man, you know, the the if I was still, if Nikon was still my main thing, and here I go off on a tangent instead of catching up. If Nikon was still my main camera and wildlife was still my main focus, which it is, I would be wanting a Z9 and they've got a Z 800 millimeter 6.3 phase Fresnel or Fresnel, however you pronounce it. Uh, man, I, that would be the lens and the, and the camera. Of course that lens is $6,000, but for us, for a, you know, it, that's cheap compared to like a 600 F4. And I'd rather have that lens than a 600 F4 if I was using a full frame camera, which a Z9 is. Uh, so there's my tangent. Stephen Dudley says, do you use a certain metering mode or change it with different situations? I have a Canon RP. I use, I don't know what even what it's called on Canon, but I use basically the full, the full sensor metering. I used to use spot metering, but it, it was just so all over the place. Now I use full sensor metering and exposure compensation is easier to dial in that way. Jeff, what else do you need? A second camera body? Casey says, do you think Nikon will make a D500 replacement? I hope so. I made a, hey Nikon, make this camera and I had a, and I made a, a Z90 logo and I called it like a, basically an APS-Z Z9. And I, gosh, it's, it's been a long time since I made that video and they still haven't made it. Of course, I also made a, hey Nikon, would you hurry up and release the 200 to 600 video? And that video is probably nearly two years and it may be more than two years old. And that, that 200 to 600 lens is on the Z road map and they still haven't made it, but maybe it's getting closer. Uh, I seriously looked at an R7, but just can't pull the trigger on it. Well, it's inexpensive. 
It, but the, the trouble with the R7 is the 100 to 500 is so expensive. Um, but the 100 to 400 is super cheap, and that'll get your foot in the door while you save up for the 100 to 500. The 100 to 500 uh, RF mount F 5.6 to 8, and it's light as a feather. I don't know where it is. It's over there somewhere in the cabinet. Uh, Nikon has to make a D500 and D850 replacement. Yeah, well, I, uh, I guess the... I guess the Z8, which may be the camera that, that they're about to announce, is probably, if I had to guess, going to be the D850 replacement. Um, similar features, probably not a stack sensor um, to the Z9, but no built-in battery grip. Um, high resolution, maybe even higher resolution than the, than the Z9 would be my guess. So... Who knows if if and when they'll actually do it and and all my all my specs are guesses, so I don't have I don't have the inside track. Uh, Jeff and Leslie is talking to J Rod Art. I mentioned on Chuck's channel this morning. Oh yeah, I see I think I saw that comment and I asked who Chuck was. And I saw the gas comment, what memory cards do you use? I saw that. I'm all mixed up over here. Big bird fishing, what will cause auto focus issues? Yeah, I talked about that one and then that's when I got lost. Greeter Falls is near me. Great birding location in spring and fall. Interesting, except that the canopy is dense and it can get dark. I gotcha. It's about, I think it's about an hour and 40 minute drive for me to get there. And I'm going to leave tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock Eastern. Uh, and I'm hoping that it rains there all night long. And it, I'm hoping that it stops, but it's still foggy when I arrive. Uh, Let's see, Angelo. Winter just came back with a vengeance in Northern California. Snow down to 500 feet the next two days. Freezing temps. Wow. Isn't that funny? I mean, we're on the same continent, but way different weather. Chuck is over on AP Studios live stream on Wednesday at 12 on Saturdays at 9. Oh, does he do regular videos or is it all live streams? Uh, Jeff and Leslie said, try shooting video of a couple hundred wood frogs having a party in a pool without changing focus yeah i gotcha that that's uh that's funny okay wow i am way behind angela says big bird heat haze can mess you up that's that's an interesting point i wonder if there was um i wonder if there was more haze when you were working uh with your canon than when you were with the um than when you were with the sony Try a Z30, Jeff, and use your Z glass. Um, you know, they've got a, a, a special right now where you can buy a Z30 and keep it for 30 days and send it back and they'll refund all your money. I definitely don't want to keep one. Not that I don't think it's probably a fantastic camera. I just don't really have a use for it, but I would like to do a few test videos with it. But I'm not the the type of person who buys something and sends it back. That's that's kind of that's not my mo. Uh, otherwise, it's a nice idea. Jeff and Leslie, my minimalist kit would be a 100 to 500, 24 to 100, and the 100 millimeter macro. I don't. I'm not familiar with the 24 to 100. I'm, I wonder if you mean 24 to 105. Probably so. I like, um, you know, I carry different things at different times. Like tomorrow, I'm going to carry my 14 to 35, and I'm going to carry the 24 to 105, and I'll probably carry that small 100 to 400 just in case I need a long focal length, even though I don't think it's as good a lens as the 100 to 500. It's a lot smaller to carry on the hike. But then other times of the year, <coughs> I'll slip the macro lens in the bag, uh, just in case and uh, still others I mean it's you know if I was to do a what's in my bag I'd have to, I'd have to update it every time I go out because it's different every time uh, let's see here heat distortion yeah definitely we struggle with uh, Heather and I struggle with heat distortion when we shoot UTC soccer um, because the, the matches that we shoot are on Sundays in the summer and it's usually uh, like at 12 or 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And man, we're always hoping for a cloudy day so there's not heat distortion coming off that field. 
because it makes it so much harder. Uh, J-Rod says, also use the SanDisk 128. Good stuff. Angelo, yes, Ron, thanks. And Ron says, oops, I meant Big Bird heat distortion. Sorry, Angelo. Uh, oh, there's Heather. Heather is in class, but she, she snuck in enough to wave. Hi, Heather. Hope you're doing well in there. I miss you. Uh, let's see. Other thing is never shoot out your window. That messes you up, too. Um, well, I saw a video done by Steve Smith, Steve Perry, Steve Perry, and he was talking about how if you're in a warm car and it's cold outside and your lens is warm, you can have heat distortion coming off of your lens hood. So in that situation, if your pictures are not coming out good and you can't figure out why, take your lens hood off because your your lens hood's warm and there's heat distortion coming up right in front of your lens off the lens hood and he he tested it he's pretty he's pretty sharp that guy um but we we work from the from the car all the time and um uh, don't have too much problem you know usually the car and the outside are a similar temperature but when it's really cold outside and you've got the heat on in the car and your camera's warm most of the time that makes a difference big bird fishing thanks man Hi, Big Bird Fishing. Ron Durant, don't worry, Phil. We can carry the combo. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. I appreciate that. Uh, I agree with Ron. Beach focus issues are often heat distortion, even when it's not hot. That's a good point. Have you? Um, <laughs> Heather is asking about the Thin Mints. Yes, I do have the Thin Mints in here. Um, let me press this button to see if the camera is focusing on them. Yes, it is. There's, we, Heather and I live in this neighborhood that is just huge. Our lot number is 610, I think, or maybe 650. Anyway, and we're nowhere near the end. Um, so there's a lot of houses. And these Girl Scouts, this time of year, they set up right at the front of the neighborhood with a table and all the, and I just, you know, I, it was, I, I didn't even, I, there was nothing I could do about it. The car just stopped. And next thing you know, I was buying Thin Mints. So, uh. Yeah, I brought the Thin Mints in here so I could mention that during the live stream. Thanks for reminding me because I had forgotten completely. Who has Thin Mints? Uh, the, the girls in the in the neighborhood. Jeff and Leslie, J-Rod Art. I've been carrying a Sony RX-10 4 for video, but carrying two cameras is kind of a pain. Yeah, see, and that's why I love... That's why I love this so much. This is the, you know, and I put a, a little splash at the beginning of, of every video where I use this just to let people know what I use. But this, it has this case around it. And with this case, you can just stick it in your pants pocket. And it's fine. And then you put your microphone right here. Uh, if I can get it on there, I don't want to stretch this shirt. And then... This is the DJI Pocket 2 uh, Creator Kit, which has the extension on the bottom. Uh, and the extension has a speaker, and it has the, the Bluetooth to where it works with the microphone, and the microphone comes with that kit. You just turn it on. It's got a little screen on it. And, uh, and press record. Blah, 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 blah. Press record again. Turn it off. And stick it back in your pants pocket. I love the DJI Pocket 2. It is a fantastic gizmo. And all my videos are, are well, this live stream is not. This live stream is 1080p. But all my videos are, are 4K24. And it works fine at 4K24. Ah. Uh. Yes, I've thought about that too. I need to get a tad bit higher. We do. I think they're on Phil's desk. Yes, that is exactly where they are. I bought a cheap GoPro type camera. We'll test it out soon. Yeah, I used, um, I mean, I used to use for, for, for a long time. I use this little camera right here to vlog. This is a, uh, 
This is a Canon M50, uh, the original Canon M50, and it's just a dynamite little camera. Uh, it's got a mic jack, and I would vlog with this, and I and I vlogged with it for a long, long time, and it has it has really good autofocus in 1080p, but when you switch this camera to 4K, which it does have 4K, it uh, the good autofocus you lose that feature, so that pretty much retired this little camera and then I started using um, I used a GoPro to vlog for a while I used a DJI um, oh god now I can't remember the name of the DJI GoPro clone I used one of those for a while but once I got the pocket too that was it and I think I've been using it probably more than a year now let me put this back up All right, now where are we? R7 is worth the money. I only got the R7 because I love my 7D Mark II so much. You know, um, Heather and I did a little basketball shootout where I shot, this was um, Thursday night, and I used my D500 and the lens that's actually doing this video right now, the, the 24-70 f2.8, and Heather used the R7 and my RF 24 to 70 2.8. And you know, there were some things about the D500 that were better. It's just a more pro level camera. Um, like, when it's only 10 frames per second and, and in mechanical, the R7 is 15, but you never hit the buffer. I mean, you can freaking lay on the, on the shutter button. I think it'll stop you at 200 just to make sure you're not accidentally uh, wearing your, your, um, shutter out but I mean you, you don't run out of buffer on the D500 now the autofocus isn't quite as good but man <laughs> it's it's just a, a more pro feeling camera but it's also a much much heavier camera and uh, I could tell the difference use shooting with a D500 versus shooting with an R7 it's 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 heavier great camera though uh, I am I'm glad I still have it even though I find myself shooting with it less and less often uh, and the D500, what, what made me think of that is, is the D500 versus the R7 might kind of be like a 7D Mark II versus the R7. A little, a little, the, I think the 7D Mark II might have been a little bit more pro feeling, but feature wise, the R7 blows it away. I'm still waiting on my 800 uh, PF. Oh, cool. So you've got one on order. Awesome. I, I hope you get it, man. That's, and I'll be jealous when you do. That is an awesome, awesome, just why Canon do something like that? That'd be really cool. Although I do, I love the 800 f11 because it's light as a feather, but an 800 6.3 would, would PF uh, elements in it that makes it small. Gosh, that'd be awesome. Okay. Uh, oh, Peter Richards. Hello, Peter. I think this is your first chat entry. Hi, Phil. Watched your video on RF 800 and wondered if you did try it with the extension tubes. I just, um, very slightly, um, just a little bit, kind of, I kind of tested it in the hallway outside this room. I haven't done actual photography with it and I, I, I haven't like the extension tubes I have are not long enough. I don't think there's, there's some company that makes a single piece extension tube. That's I think, and I could be wrong on this. I think it's like a 35 millimeter extension tube. And apparently that one will, uh, reduce the minimum focus distance. A little bit more significantly than my two extension tubes that I have stacked. Um, so in the real world, no. But uh, in the hallway, yes. Got to run. Thanks for coming and hanging out for a while, uh, Jeff and Leslie. I think it's just Jeff. So thank you. Jerrod says see ya. Angelo says bye, Jeff. I will never sell my D500. It stays married to the 500 PF always. I use the Lexar Professional 128 gigabytes. Very good and fast. Phil, do you follow eBird? I participated in the bird count this last weekend. It was a lot of fun and hoping to win the prize. Oh, I hope you win it too. I I don't follow eBird nearly as much as I should. And honestly, uh, my, my ace in the hole as far as that sort of thing is Heather. Uh, because she'll say stuff like, hey, they spotted a, a I don't know, um, wide-eyed Vireo on 
blah 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 and then we then we go in that area and look around for it but she she follows that a lot more than me she she really helps me out in that area or helps both of us out uh, Angela says the 100 to 400 is still a great lens I'm assuming you're talking about the RF 100 to 400 yes I'm super happy with that little lens uh, and if I didn't have the 100 to 500 I would use it way more but there are still sometimes when I use it instead of the 100 to 500 and that's mostly for minimum focus distance type situations like butterflies and uh, that sort of a thing. And if I'm carrying a telephoto lens just in case, you know what I mean? Like I might hike to this waterfall tomorrow and never get it out of the bag, but what if on the way to the waterfall, there's a, an, an albino whitetail buck on, on the side of the trail and I don't have a telephoto lens. So I carry it in the bag just in case. Uh, there are tons of D500 still out there. Yeah, yeah, including one right here on my desk. Uh, oh, man, what have I done? I need to look for, okay. Casey says, hey, Phil, if you could go anywhere to photograph, where would your dream destination be? What gear would you take? Well, uh, I'd like to go to Norway and photograph the fjords. Um, and I might just take a... Uh, a 24 to 105 for that. Um, a dream wildlife location? I don't know. Maybe the Galapagos Islands with a 100 to 500. You know, you would you'd rather have uh, a heavier setup there in terms of range, but the 100 to 500 is lighter and would be easier to use. Uh, let's see. J-Rod agreed the Z8 might be a mini Z9 at a more affordable price. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, but again, I don't think, although it'd be really cool if it did, but I don't think it's going to have a stack sensor um, like the Z9 does. Maybe it will. Hopefully it will. Um, Chuck does live stream chats on many subjects. Cool. Bill Martin, at Greeter, be sure to hike above the main falls too. The turbulence in the upper stream is usually pretty awesome. Yeah, the, I've only been there once. Uh, I attempted to go a second time and hit a deer on the way, and so I never did make it. But that first time I, I went, I, Heather and I uh, went to the upper falls, and then we went to the lower falls. Um, do you do you recommend also going to, I think, what's the other one up there called? Board Tree Falls. Do you recommend going to that one too? Heather says she's not in class anymore, and she wants everybody to hit that thumbs up button. Yeah, do that, please, for Heather. Let's hear that guitar, Phil. Well, this is this uh, this guitar. I don't know. Can you see it? Oh, the the the, uh, the Z50 died. So let me make a change. Z50 has has the Z50 battery only goes for so long. You know what? Instead of changing, I'm going to put a fresh battery in it instead. Fresh battery. And we're back. I wonder how my battery's looking in the Z6. Oh, still more than half. Okay, uh, let's hear that guitar now. Um, oh yeah, what I was gonna say was this guitar is a t-shirt that live without a net video that I was talking about Eddie Van Halen played this this is the Kramer 5150 guitar and Heather got me this shirt so I thought I would I thought I would drape it over this chair in the background to kind of go along with the name of this live stream but the funny thing about it is uh, you can kind of see it but as soon as I put on the uh, as soon as I put the picture-in-picture picture from the Z50 on, you can almost not see it in the frame. Um, I do have a guitar around the house, but I don't think I'm going to play it for you guys because I, I haven't practiced in quite some time, and it would be embarrassing. 
I would not hesitate taking my old 5D Mark III with the EF100-400 great setup since my 7D Mark II died. Yeah. Osmo Action is the GoPro equivalent for DJI. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Heather. Phil, are you using two Aver boxes to run two cameras at the same time? Yes, uh, I'm using two of those. They're fantastic. And uh, I use, they've got a 4K version, but you don't need that for a live stream because you don't live stream in 4K. And the, uh, let me see if I can find it and show you the, show you the, the gizmo I'm using. Think that's enough copies of Live Without a Net? This is it right here. I'm using two of these, and I think uh, I think when I got mine, see, and they've got a. Well, anyway, I think when I got mine, it was a lot more expensive than this, but it's come down in price. But that is, that's my capture card, and it works super duper pooper scooper well. Ron says hi to Heather. Hi, Ron. My professor let us out super early tonight. Heather, you can come in here if you want to. I got, a, I got an extra chair for you. Take care, Phil and friends. Dinner time. Have a wonderful night. Thanks for hanging out, Miguel. Wildlife trip, Alaska, Montana, with every camera and lens I own. Hi, sweetie pie. Did you come to say hi? Mm -hmm. Do you want to sit down? Okay. I don't have the camera set up um, right to have both of us on the screen. It's okay. I don't have to be on the screen. Okay. You can still talk. Oh, you're kind of on the screen. Here, why don't I scoot over this way some? I think I almost smashed my foot. There's Heather. Um, you should pull up my phone and help me get caught up because I'm so far behind. Take okay. care of Phil and friends. Wildlife trip, Alaska, Montana with every camera. Awesome, Angelo. Peter says, probably you won't remember, but last week I had concerns about money I spent on a second hand RF 100-500 from R7. It arrived and I just love it. We'll be selling my EF. Yes, I do remember that and I'm glad that you are liking it. I've I, I had a feeling you would. Phil is doing a good job keeping up with all that is going on. Two thumbs up. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're almost caught up. Too funny. Uh, looked like a real guitar. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a shirt. And they make a, they make a, a um, um, you can buy a, one that looks like that these days, which is really cool. Uh, let's see. J. Rod Photo, have to run. Had a great night, Phil and everyone. Thank you, you too. Glad you stopped in. OBS does support two direct USB cameras. Yeah, um, I don't know. I just like to use the Avermedia thingy. Good night, J. Rod. What is your real name? The Avermedia is the bomb. I have one on Phil's recommendation. I didn't know you bought one. Cool. That's that's awesome. I'm glad you got one. Uh, J. Rod Photo, Jim, Ron. Hello, Jim. I guess that's what the J is in J-Rod. Nice to meet you, Jim. You too, Ron. Okay, now that we're caught up, I want to talk about another thing. And um, that is... Uh, what is that is? Oh, I know what it is. I've been doing a lot of um, focus bracketing. And I think the first fro focus bracketing video comes out, um, gosh, when does it come out? I'm not sure. It may be this coming Saturday even. And um, I've done, you know, I did it, Heather and I have done focus bracketing handheld like you're not supposed to do on a moving target like you're not supposed to do with some success. But I've been doing the focus bracketing um, feature, which is in the R7 and the R6 Mark II, for landscape photography and I've just really enjoyed it and I think I have three videos coming up at waterfalls using that feature and then I have uh, back to Eddie Van Halen I have one where I put the macro lens on and I made a, a focus stack 
of this uh, Eddie Van Halen Funko Pop that Heather got me because she's very nice to me. Um, so that's coming up, but I wanted to show you, um, I wanted to show you a guy who is friends of mine made a focus stacking video before I made mine and that's Tim Childers. So you guys should all check out Ch Tim Childers channel. Uh, let's see, Casey says, does the R7 focus stack in camera? Yes. And so does the R6 Mark II. Um, but Tim made a video about it and it came out, when did it come out? It came out two months ago. And it's one of, it, it, it's one of his more popular videos. It's got 2,500 views, which is a lot. Tim's the guy who interviewed me. He also interviewed Ron. Um, so check out his channel and especially check out this focus bracketing macro with the Canon R6 Mark II video that I've got my pointer pointing at right now. Really cool. And then, um, so that'll get you geared up for the focus bracketing videos that I have coming out over the next, uh, few weeks. It seemed like there was one other thing. I want, do you think I should talk about this guy right here? You can if you want to. There's a question. Oh, let's see. Do you always use variable ND when using video mode? Uh, no. Matter of fact, I never use a variable ND um, in video mode. Um, I know you're supposed to keep your shutter speed. Uh, like if you're shooting at 24 frames a second, you're supposed to stay exactly at 150th. And um, that's basically what I, I, I'm shooting 150th right now on, on the uh, on the z6 but when i'm out just hiking around and, and doing a quick video clip with the um, with the pocket two I, I just let it ride if it if the footage is a little bit jumpy it's okay with me it's a vlog uh so no any more he said i i had no idea regarding the focus stacking in camera he was looking at the olympic olympus em1x uh, okay you know i think the uh i think the om1 um will stack in camera as well mm -hmm. um so, uh, there's this new guy who has a channel, and his name, he goes by Tosh Photography. I think his actual name is, is uh, Chris Chapman, yes. and he's, he's Canadian, and he's been, on, uh, he's been on the Photo Tripper channel with Gavin a couple of times, two or three times, I think. Mm -hmm. And the first time he was on there, Gavin was saying that he was a, a client. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. You know, when when uh, Gavin's mm -hmm. wife was first on there, he was calling her a stalker. So, you know, it's all part of the of the, the show of the show. You know, which is fun and funny. But anyway, he's got a YouTube channel now, um, and you know, he's his YouTube channel shared on Gavin's channel. So even though it's a brand new channel, it's already got 955 subscribers. And I'm telling you, it takes a long time to get to 955 subscribers if you don't have uh, a nice leg up. So good for him to get a nice leg up from Gavin. But I've, I've looked at his, at his channel. A lot of his videos are, are just drone videos, but he's also started to do some, some actual photography videos. And the thing that, that, that cracks me up, uh, I, I, first of all, I think you should subscribe. It's pretty cool. But the thing that cracks me up is he bought a Mitsubishi Delica, which is what Adam Gibbs has been driving for years and years, and and um, and Thomas Heaton uh, bought a uh, a Mitsubishi Delica and customized it. So it's just it's anyway. I just I got a kick out of the fact that he bought a Mitsubishi Delica, and he also just bought uh, just very recently he bought the uh, the RF fourteen to thirty five, which I just bought as well. So anyway, there's another channel to take a peek at that I got a kick out of him. But I just, I, that just cracks me up that he bought that, uh, that he bought that Mitsubishi Delica. Well, uh, what do you think? You ready to chill? Mm -hmm. I got everything chilling. Okay. All right. Well, hey, uh, we're going to call it a night and we sure do appreciate everybody joining us on this live stream. I think this one has been uh, really fun. And uh, I enjoyed everybody uh, participating so much in the chat. That was super cool. And I do appreciate everybody hanging around and uh, everybody giving us a thumbs up is always cool and subscribing and hitting the bell and um, tune in. What day is this? Today's 
Wednesday, the 20... Tune in Saturday second. morning for the next video, 7.30 United States Eastern Time, New York City Eastern Time. And uh, thanks. Bye, everybody.